Hi, my name is Diana. I am a member of Managed OpenShift Black Belt team at Red Hat. So today we're going to talk about backup and restore processes for your uh, Red Hat OpenShift services on AWS or ROSA and Azure Red Hat OpenShift or Arrow clusters. And when we talk about backup and restore, there are actually a few considerations that you may want to think about when you, um, before you move forward with it. So let's write that down here, considerations. The first thing you may want to think about is that typically uh, backup and restore is a component of what we call disaster recovery plan or DR plan. So when you think about disaster recovery, you may want to think about if you are designing the system to be um, highly available or HA, or if you want it to design it as a full tolerant or FT. So in this case, HA or FT. And the main differences between those two is that uh, for HA, you design it uh, so that you minimize your downtime and for FD, and it will be zero downtime during your uh, backup and restore processes. The other thing that you may want to consider as well is the RPO or recovery point objective and your RTO or recovery time objective. So what, it's, uh, what it means was that RPO is the amount of um, tolerable amount of data loss um, during your downtime and RTO is the uh, tolerable amount of time that um, you uh, that you allow for your system to resume to normal. And the other thing that you may also want to consider here is also the location. So for example, you may want to think about um, whether you store it in um, in another uh, in another uh, cluster, for example, make it like a hot backup, or if you think about it, uh, if you want to save it in a persistent volume like AWS S3, for example, as a cold backup. Now, the other thing that you may want to consider as well is the frequency of your backup itself. So you may want to, for example, um, uh, doing a backup restore every hour or every three hours or every day. But then again, when you think about it, not all apps have to be done um, have to be probably backed up every one hour, three hour, and so forth. Um, there are things that you may want to consider in terms of app-specific uh, uh, requirements. So, for example, uh, 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 products or services like databases, for example, that may not lend themselves very well to the typical uh, backup and restore toolkits. That's also what you may want to consider here. Um, and another thing that you want to also consider is your security as well. You may want to all, uh, have only the users with authentications and authorizations that have access to your backed up or um, backup data. And the other thing that you want to consider as well is your automation as well. Here, we recommend customers to um, not doing this manually, but rather automate your backup and restore processes. And last but not least, is that you also want to make sure that um, you plan this well, you validate and test it, and then you document it for your team. So here, we're going to say plan, validate, test, and document. So. Now that we have these considerations on hand, and then you, what's next is to think about what to back up. Now here, you may want to think about this from really from the app specific level. Again, a what to back up. And then here, you want to think about, typically people will think about what to back up as at CD, right? But etcd is not something that we recommend to back up for numerous reasons because when you're doing etcd when you're copying etcd what it is it's a key value pair that have the exact configurations of your cluster and it's highly unlikely that you're going to back up exact same cluster uh, specifications to another location so here we do not really recommend you to uh, doing etcd backup or store but rather when you think about it in app um, app level, 
then you want to determine just which apps or workloads that you want to do backup and restore with. So here we will recommend you think about it um, from the namespaces point of view, just which one or those. And you also want to think about the CRs and the CRDs or custom resources definitions or custom resources. And then you also want to think about like just which YAML manifests, for example, that you want to um, uh, back up and restore as well. And then um, again, with your uh, also with your volume, you may want to think about which storage, for example, uh, that you want to back up your data to. And then, yeah, and all of this, whether be it in the same clusters or a different clusters, is all the, this is the highly the the overall ideas of what you can backup and restore with. And last but not least is tooling that can help you with the backup and restore processes itself. So here we actually, when I mentioned about um, uh, automation before, there are actually a uh, few things that you may want to consider as well. Things like GitOps uh, or a CI CD pipeline. If you can insert this backup or source processes as part of your GitOps and CI CD tooling, then it will help your team tremendously because then it will be, um, then you because then you can rely to repeatedly um, do this process for in the future as well. And repeatability is the key here. And the other tooling that we also have here at Red Hat is what we call OpenShift ABI for data protection or what we abbreviate here as OADP. So what it is, it's, um, it's essentially an operator that provides uh, the ABI to help you with your uh, backup and restore processes. And, um, and it also, and also comprises of the Valero plugins as well. And the other thing that we want to uh, recommend here as well is what we call migration toolkit for container, or here we will abbreviate it as MTC. So what it does, it um, it actually is was built um, based on the uh, Confair pro uh, Confair project, and it allows you to migrate your apps and workloads from one cluster to another. So, and we also have. Um, uh, some other third-party solutions providers uh, in our operator hub that you can have a look and then uh, select and choose which one that best fit with your backup and restore processes. So that is essentially what we are going to uh, what we talked about today. And thank you again for watching. And if you do have any questions, feel free to check out our website at www.dapratha.com. Thank you.